Hi, this is Nick Burke. Um, I've been asked to talk about intravascular lithotripsy, uh, particularly as it pertains to the coronary arteries. These are my disclosures. Well, uh, this is all about cal coronary calcium. Uh, and coronary artery calcium, as you know, is an independent predictor of not being able to implant a drug-eluting stent. The lack of flexibility in the calcified arteries makes it difficult to advance stents down a tortuous anatomy. There's also difficulty in stent delivery, which may lead to damage of the polymer or drug coating leading to impaired drug uh, delivery. But uh, it, most importantly is that calcium inhibits circumferential expansion. The greater the arc, length, or thickness of the calcium, the greater the likelihood of stent under expansion. An asymmetrical stent expansion is seen in up to 50% of stents deployed in calcified lesions. Stent under expansion, of course, is associated with an increase in ischemic events at one year. Calcium worsens long-term outcomes as well. This was from a meta-analysis demonstrating that patients with severe lesion calcification with three-year follow-up showed lower rates of complete revascularization and increased mortality. This is data from the Horizons AMI and Acuity trials looking at coronary artery calcification. Uh, the patients were stratified to none or mild, moderate, and severe. And the more calcium you had, the higher the risk of death, the higher the risk of cardiac death, higher risk of TLR, and higher risk of subsequent MACE. Well, we do have some treatments uh, to address calcium, uh, but they can often compromise the procedure. Current vessel prep strategies have similar predictable challenges with severe coronary artery calcification, leading to less effective interventions, particularly high-pressure balloons, uh, which can damage the surrounding tissue and increases substantially your risk of a significant dissection. Rotational, and as well as orbital atherectomy, uh, is available. It solely ablates superficial calcium, and it, but it can also still result in incomplete or asymmetric stent expansion, leading to greater acute and subacute failure. Furthermore, these are uh, it's complex equipment and it's difficult to learn and master. Lithotripsy, however, uh, has been uh, uh, manipulated for cardiovascular applications. We've had extracorporeal lithotripsy uh, for many years, over 30 years of safety data and kidney stone treatment, and this has now been translated into intravascular lithotripsy, which is miniaturized and arrayed lithotripsy emitters for localized lithotripsy at the site of the vascular calcium. The uh, shockwave uh, coronary uh, intravascular lithotripsy system components uh, are three. Uh, there is the generator, which is a very simple uh, device. It's uh, portable, uh, mo uh, mounted on an IV pole, and it's battery powered. There are no external connections needed. The connector is very simple and quick. They have smart magnetic uh, connections, and the device is actually push button activated. The catheter itself is extremely intuitive for anybody that does PCI. It's an RX system and it goes over any 014 guide wire. Uh, this is actually a demonstration of uh, how these uh, sound waves are generated. Uh, this is actually a gas bubble inside the balloon that expands and contracts, creating sound pressure waves. And that subsequently gets transported to the surrounding uh, surfaces and tissues. So it's pretty easy to use. It's actually extremely easy to, to use. You line up the balloon uh, across the calcified lesion uh, in a one-to-one -one, uh, balloon-to-artery uh, sized ratio, inflate it to four atmospheres, and start applying the lithotripsy uh, shocks. Oftentimes, you'll actually see the balloon expand just uh, with the lithotripsy shocks, and then a final angiogram. It's important to think about uh, calcification in terms of where it is in the vessel and whether it's concentric or eccentric. Uh, concentric calcium is actually a little bit easier to treat with a shockwave uh, device. That's because the balloon uh, and the emitters are localized uh, more closely to the calcium uh, itself. And in the eccentric lesion, the emitter uh, tends to be a little bit displaced. Uh, in addition, when you have concentric calcification, the shock waves can actually be sent back and forth and sort of creating an echo chamber, if you will, whereas some of the shock waves get dissipated in the soft tissue in the center calcium. What this boils down to is that you need to do more 
uh, shocks or more pulses uh, with eccentric calcification. We have little uh, a little coronary uh, data to start. First is disrupt. Uh, CAD1, there's two and three, uh, as well as four. The Disrupt CAD1 study was for patients with stable angina, unstable angina, or silent ischemia. Moderate and severely calcified lesions, they all had to be de novo, reference vessel between 2.5 to 4.0, significantly stenosed with a uh, lesion length less than 32 millimeters. The objective was to assess the safety and performance. The primary safety endpoint was 30-day MACE. Primary performance endpoint was clinical success, and 60 patients uh, were enrolled. And basically what they found is that it was an extremely safe uh, procedure. There was a incidence of 3.3% of significant dissection uh, from uh, resulting from the device, which was uh, two uh, patients total. Um, final, no dissection after stenting. No incidence of perforation, abrupt closure, slow flow, or no reflow. At safety, the 30-day MACE rate was 5%, driven almost exclusively by non-QAVE myocardial infarction, and the six-month MACE rate was also quite low. In terms of efficacy, the clinical success rate was 95%. The device was successful in being placed and utilized 98.3% uh, of the time and 100% of the time after this uh, stents were able to be delivered. The Disrupt CAD2 study was a larger study, a uh, similar uh, patient population, and it was a post-market study to assess the safety and performance of the coronary uh, intravascular lithotripsy system with more patients in more centers. The primary safety endpoint was in-hospital MACE. Pri uh, secondary performance endpoints were clinical success and angiographic success to find a stent delivery with low residual stenosis without angiographic complications. This enrolled 120 subjects across 15 sites and had procedural and 30-day follow-up. Basically, there were complex calcified lesions enrolled in the study. 94% of them had severe calcification. 26 millimeter was the mean calcified length. 30% of them were eccentric, and 30% involved side branch. Clinical success uh, was 94%. Angiographic success was 100%, and stent delivery was 100% uh, in all of the patients. The final angiographic complications were actually zero. No significant dissections, no perforation, no abrupt closure, no no slow flow, no reflow. Major adverse cardiac events in hospital was quite low, driven, driven exclusively uh, by a non Q wave myocardial infarction based on blood testing. Uh, and major adverse cardiovascular events uh, through 30 days was also extremely low. There was an OCT sub-study, and the summary of that demonstrating the intravascular lithotripsy significantly increased luminal area. Calcium fracture is the mechanism of action of the intravascular lithotripsy, and it demonstrated circumferential calcium modification leading to full stent expansion. Uh, this is a uh, case example, proximal LAD with side branch uh, involvement. You see the proximal vessel, the area of maximal calcification here, and then the distal vessel. Uh, this is post-PCI. The white arrows demonstrate uh, calcium fractures, and the final result is that you've got uh, an outstanding lumen area and a good uh, stent apposition and expansion. Um, so the recap of CAD1 and CAD, disrupt CAD1 and CAD2, intravascular lithotri tri lithotripsy treatment in highly calcified coronary arteries is highly effective for delivery of stents and reduces stenosis, 100% uh, stent depo deployment and high rate of acute gain and low rates of residual stenosis. It's safe. The primary endpoint was achieved in 95% of treated lesions in disrupt CAD1. No major interprocedural complications, including perforation, embolization, slow flow, or no reflow in 180 patients uh, in total uh, in disrupt CAD1 and 2. Low MACE rates out to 6%, uh, or six months at 8.5%. Proper lesion preparation is needed in severely calcified lesions prior to PCI. Ineffective lesion prep leads to stent under expansion, complications, and worse outcomes. Current vessel prep strategies have similar and predictable challenges with severe coronary artery calcification, leading to less effective intervention. The unique mechanism of action of intravascular lithotripsy optimizes stent delivery, expansion, and apposition. Calcium fractures are seen in about 80% of the lesions analyzed by OCT and full stent expansion as possible. Uh, the final uh, U.S. study is going to be, or the big U.S. study is uh, uh, 
uh, disrupt C83. Uh, the enrollment is actually completed. The trial design follows the Orbit 2 study. The objective is designed to assess the safety and effectiveness of the uh, shockwave uh, IVL system. Uh, the performance goal is based on Orbit 2. The primary safety endpoint is 30-day MACE rate. Primary effective endpoint is less than 50% residual and no in-hospital MACE. It's, uh, it's enrolled about 400 subjects across 50 sites. There are a number of sub-studies sub and follow-up will be at procedural 30 days, 6, 12, and 24 months. That's it. And if you have any questions, please feel free to